Hi, my name is Christoph. I'm an engineer at Nextcloud. And in this workshop, I will show you how you can integrate a Nextcloud app into the Nextcloud unified search. For the search demo, I would like to write an app that uses the Wikipedia public API to search for Wikipedia articles. I chose this API because it doesn't require an API key, so it's very easy to set up for everyone. We can see here um, the preview page of the of the API. So for our search term Nextcloud, we get back a list of entries with like a title, page ID, um, a snippet and so on. And also has some information on the pagination, like the offset. Before we look into the code of the Nextcloud search, we should discuss pagination. Understanding this concept makes it easier to work with the Unified Search API. The concept of pagination is about splitting a set of elements into chunks, so it's usually easier to process them. With our Wikipedia integration, that means that every time we ask for search results, it will only give us a limited num number of elements. And then we have to do another request and another one. So eventually we can have the full set. Now the two ways to do pagination is to either you look at the indexes, like the position of the elements, or base it on an attribute of each of the rows. Let's start with the index-based pagination, also known maybe as offset and limit. So when we fetch our first page here, we will get let's say five elements, and that is index zero to index four. So for our next page, we will request anything that is after index four. So we will get back five to index nine. For the next page, we will get index 10 to index 14. So far so good, but there is a catch. What if the data that we want to query changes? like entries vanish and other ones um, are added. So we fetch our first page again and get back the five elements as we did before. But before we can fetch the second page, one of the elements of the first page is deleted from this API, which means the indexes shift. So as we request anything after index four, there is one element, the new index four, which we'll never get. I just call it a phantom here. Also, the next page will be shifted by one index because of the deleted entry. Let's look at the alternative of this index-based pagination, which uses the sort attribute as a cursor. The sort attribute or property or column is that one field of the result entries that is used for sorting. So the premise of pagination is, in general, that the entries are sorted by an attribute because you need consistency from one uh, page to the next one. Here in this example, I assign times to the individual rows. So you see the first page will be from 1412 to 1423. The next one will start at 2024. We fetch the first page pretty much like we did with the alternative approach, but for the second page, we don't specify an index at which the page should start, but we say that it should be anything after 1423. So it's not based on the position of the last element of the previous page, but it's about data. For the third page, the same applies. We just say, give us anything that comes after 1449, and we get the results that are 1451 and following. If we now return to the problem that I discussed before, of where data of the results changes, we again delete one of the elements of the first page. So let's assume we already fetched the first page, then the, that element is dropped. And as we fetch the second page, we say, give us anything after 1423. And now here you can see that the page actually stays at the same elements. It is not influenced by the removal of this one entry so it's more stable. The same happens if a new element gets inserted, like at the position of the first page, 
the second page would be the same. And that is why if you have the option to choose between offset and a cursor, you should always opt for the cursor. Okay, so let's get started with the coding. Let me show you the app skeleton that I prepared for this demonstration. So we have our metadata in app info info XML, which just has the app ID, which is Wikipedia underscore search. Uh, started with a 010 version, uh, namespace will be Wikipedia search, and I will make it compatible with uh, the just announced and released Nextcloud 20, as well as the Nextcloud server master branch, which is which is already tagged as 21. Okay, so the other thing that is there already is the search service which is a simple class with one important message, the search. And it takes a search term, which is a string, and an optional offset, and turns that into a Wikipedia search result. This Wikipedia search result is a little helper class to transport the data. Like it, it's just an array of articles and the optional offset so it's easier to return two values from this one method. Um, we don't have to look into too much of the details, but basically it uses the Wikipedia um, API that I showed before, um, adds our search term, URL encoded, and then parses the JSON that is returned and transforms that, that <clears throat> transforms that into this Wikipedia search result and the array of Wikipedia articles. And here we see we can extract the title from the from each of the results and we can build the URL based on the page ID. This is where we get the offset. So if it's not set, then we just have null, but otherwise we use whatever Wikipedia tells us to use for the next uh, for the next paginated request. Okay, assuming that this code will just work, we can start our search provider. The search provider is the class, it's, it's like a glue code that connects the Nextcloud Unified Search with your app, or it tells Nextcloud how to use Unified Search for your app. The class has to implement the I provider of OCP search. So let's take a look here. It's an interface uh, with four methods. There is the get ID, which I guess we will just use the application ID. Um, there's a name, which is shown for each of the groups that you see in the user interface returned for the search results. Um, there is an order which determines the positioning of a result set. Like you have results combined from multiple sources and some are more important, like say from Nextcloud Talk because it's a real-time um, real application and Wikipedia entries are less important. So we will use a high number here. And then the core method is search, which here we get the user. So we have some context, not, use it, not that it's not used for our app, but for others it's relevant. And we get the search query, which will tell us the search term and the sort order if that is specified limit, like how many um, elements we should fetch, a cursor, and then also if we need that for our um, context, it tells us which root and which parameters are used right now. That's not relevant for our app though. Okay, and what we have to return is a search result. Let's look at that class as well. It is a serializable class, so that will be returned by the API of Nextcloud. And to construct it, you can't use to construct it, it's private. But there are two factory methods. There is complete and there is paginated. It's possible to return the full um, set of results immediately without pagination. We use it, for example, for the 
unified search integration of searching settings in Nextcloud. Um, that list will never be larger than, let's say, 20 entries. So pagination is a bit too much and not doesn't add any benefits. So we can return the full set immediately. Um, this is also helpful if you want to say there are no results at all, then you return a complete result with an empty array. Paginated is what we will use. So here you have the name as discussed before the entries, which are the search result entry um, objects, and the cursor. The cursor is used for the next um, call of the search function of the provider. And this can be a int or a string. Okay, now let's go and create our own search provider that implements this interface. I'm creating a new namespace. And here we will place the search provider. Let's call it Wikipedia search provider. The namespace was Wikipedia search without the lip. Now it chooses the wrong one. This is the one we want. Boom. We don't need a license header right now, but we will make it strict. So as I said, we will implement the I provider from search. We'll have the PHP storm generate the stubs. Okay, so here I said we will use the application ID. So let's go ahead and also create an application class because we will need that later. And that is always found in the app info namespace. Yeah, we, PHP Storm uses the wrong namespaces again. I don't know why. So we can drop the license header again. Um, the application class has to extend app from the app framework, and we want to implement the I, or yeah, we want to implement the I bootstrap. The new mechanism of Nextcloud 20. More on that later. And here, let's add a public const app ID, and that will be Wikipedia search. Okay, cool. Now we have that, and can use it here. So the ID of the search provider is important to prevent conflicts, but if we like here use our app ID, it's very unlikely that another search provider would use Wikipedia underscore search. For the name, we want to use something like Wikipedia articles, but because um, that's user interface string, we should probably also translate it. So let's have the translation service in check that Add it as a prop. Done. Now we can here return Wikipedia articles. Okay, for the order, as I said, the Wikipedia search results are less important, so we return something high, let's say 80. Now we can get to our actual implementation of the search method. And for that, we will need the search service that I showed before. We can also have that injected. Cool. So, we fetch the results from the service. And here we need the term and the offset. Okay, so we use query get term and query get cursor. 
there's a tiny thing that we should um, care for, which is that the cursor returns an integer null or string, and the search here expects an integer. So let's add a typecast. Okay, now our results are, is our own class, the Wikipedia search result, and we have to translate this into a search result object. Here we use the paginated variant, and the name we get from here. Then um, we need the entries, which means we have to construct new um, instances of search result entry. We can map our own articles to that. We find them in the result object. And here we also need the cursor, which is our offset. Ah. That should be the one from the result, of course. To translate the articles into search results, we create those objects. So thumbnail, we don't have one. As title, we use the article title. Um, as a subline, like for each entry, you see the main title and then there is another line below. And I'd say we just use some explanatory text. Let's say um, find more more on Wikipedia. Um, as a URL, we of course use the article URL and icon. Let's just use icon info, which looks nice and makes sense for a Wikipedia article. Yeah, there's one more um, entry there around it flag but we only uh, only make sense if you have thumbnails which we don't okay so now we have our provider but nextcloud is not aware of it yet because we have to register it we can do that in the application class so as said before there's this i bootstrap which is a new mechanism in nextcloud 20. Um, basically when nextcloud starts you get the chance to register your services as well as run any other code that you want to run at that um, point of the lifecycle of an Nextcloud request. Um, we will use the register context to, like here you see all the things that you can register. Um, we'll register a search provider and the class is our Wikipedia search provider and we use the class magic class um, constant which translates this to the fully qualified class name. Okay, that should be it. All the code that is necessary to write an integration of the unified search. So there's one thing I forgot to add, add which is in the application class there should be a constructor well, maybe here to specify the app name or you can just use the constant app ID. All right, we finished the coding part. Let's take it for a test. Okay, if we go back to the browser, reload the page once, so the new, pro new provider is also known to the front end, we can give this a test 
Search for Nextcloud, there is a files result, ah, and there is the Wikipedia results. You can also see pagination will load more entries. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, this works nicely, but there's one thing that we might want to improve. Since we are using an external API for the search, every user input will be sent to Wikipedia. And that's not always what we want. So let's, uh, let's take that one step further and add a mechanism that only searches Wikipedia if the user types in wiki before the search term. To make sure that our search is only sent to Wikipedia if the user prefixes it with Wikipedia, we should check the term. So with string position, we can check um, at which, which position wiki um, shows up in the term and the space. So if that isn't zero, so if, this, if the term doesn't start with wiki and space, then we will just return an empty result set. But if we continue, we should also remove the wiki prefix, otherwise the search to Wikipedia will always include wiki. Okay, we did our change, so let's test it. If we search for next cloud again, we don't get any result from Wikipedia, but if we prefix with wiki, boom, there are the wiki results. Pretty cool. Okay, that's our search app. Easy, wasn't it? You can also find documentation online about the process that I just explained. And you can look at the other apps that already have unified search integration, which you can use as a template. If you have any questions about this process or how you can integrate your app, you can either use the chat to ask the question or simply open a new topic on the dev section of our forums. Thanks.